Hey friends, Wayne over at the Ram Man Inc. Don't forget to ink. Hey, today I wanted to talk about Mopar B body brake valves. Yes, well, the introduction of the disc brakes in 1966, they decided to add a couple things. So, uh, in 1966, when they came out, there was basically uh, nothing going on. There was that single jar top. It had the other reservoir, a deeper master cylinder. They're pretty doggone rare. And uh, they had a little block on there going to the rear. Yep, slit my throat. People call this portion valve. It's not a portion valve. All these things are pressure reducers designed to reduce the pressure to the drum brakes. Drum brakes are very effective at 100, 200 PSI. After that, they start to lock up, whereas disc brakes, they don't even start to work until you get there, right? So, that was the simplest that they used. Then in 1967, of course, with the uh, federal mandate of the dual circuit master cylinder, uh, Mopars came with this uh, block right here, your uh, safety switch right here. And of course there's that piston in there and uh, as long as the pressure's coming in on both sides it stays centered, indicating hydraulic integrity and if you got low pressure on one side the piston moves over because the high side pushes the piston over and it shuts that front or rear off like a tourniquet, automatic tourniquet, pretty neat. So, uh, starting in like 67, 68, and early 69, we had this setup. You had the safety switch, whoops. Now we're looking from the passenger side at the doggone frame rail. This is underneath the master cylinder. And then about 18 inches back, you had this pressure reducer right here. That's what you, that's what you have. Let me show you guys a picture. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And then, boy, they were upgrading fast because this brakes was a new phenomenon in hitting the road. Then, they said, okay, here we go. January 69, they started adding the metering valve. The metering valve, you know, is for the front brakes there. And, uh, meters out that flow. and doesn't open until 135 PSI making damn sure that the back brakes always engage before the front ones. So, where is it at? Ah. There we go. The three valve setup. And then right after that, they combine these. I forgot. I mean, we're getting down to months and stuff. These brake valves, they always fascinated me. I was always playing around with them. Because I was always wrecking cars. Drinking and street racing. Yeah, that's where my knowledge come from. Uh, January 70 through December 71, we were still staying with the brass. Right? Went to the two valve setup on the B-body. Really trick. Same thing as the E-body, TA valve. That's what they use, right? E-body and B-body right here. That's the official B-body right there. And uh, they did it like that because like with the Hemi cars, it's real tight right there on the frame rail. So there's your factory B-body setup right there on your disc brake cars. All right, my friends. And then, of course, like in 72, they went to that ugly... Uh, donkey turd, uh, cast iron valve, you know, the muscle car era was coming to a close. They were cheaper than everything, of course everybody knows. 
what happens to cast iron and brake fluid when it sits. It pits up pretty good. So you got all your brass valves, which are fine, and you can redo. Remember now, you know, that's what we do when people send us valves because we have all those special parts. Those real funky looking O-rings and such. Are you with me? And the springs and all that. Uh, impossible to find, friends. I mean, you know, this took years and years and years to assemble. Without uh, Uncle Ron and Uncle Joe, it would never happen. They're just decades of knowledge. Decades and decades and decades. And thank God they gave it to me. All right, gang. God bless you. God bless America. And that's the wrap up on your Mopar B-body disc brake valves. Bye.